Day. A woman was forcefully removed from court by security after she misrepresented herself as part of Omotoso's security detail. The woman, who is part of his church, the Jesus Dominion International, tried to enter the court when she was approached by the Hawks and police. The security measures at the courthouse have been very tight. Meanwhile, there were several delays this morning. Defence advocate Peter Doberman asked for an adjournment so that he could familiarise himself with the particulars on the charge sheet he requested from the state yesterday. The first witness could possibly take to the stand later today. The trial continues. AgriSA's annual congress got underway in Pretoria today. Land reform, farm murders and economic growth again came under the spotlight. More than 200 key decision makers in agriculture are attending the gathering. For more on this story, we cross to our reporter, Patricia Fizashi. Pardon me. Well, thank you so much. Yes, the gathering started uh, this morning here in uh, Pretoria and we've seen a whole lot of stakeholders within the agriculture uh, sector, of course, are coming together here and again, uh, just uh, deliberating on some of the issues that are obviously impacting the industry. And as you have mentioned, again, uh, farm murders and uh, the sensitive um, issue right now, and that is the issue of land reform, again, topping most of uh, the uh, debates and, of course, the addresses that were delivered um, here at this gathering. We also uh, saw a businessman, Petrus Mutsipe, also, um, you know, uh, just addressing some of the uh, farming community members that are gathered here to try and give them encouragement. And again, um, the message of collective partnership dominating um, his speech and just again reminding um, the farmers, the stakeholders, the government officials and uh, the investors that have been convening here um, that South Africa's future is going to be in a lot of trouble if uh, the agriculture sector, the farmers are not actually you know, fully supported and given all the resources that they need to make sure that they deliver what needs to be delivered for the country and food security being of course the main main priority. So let's speak to the uh, president of Agri-SA and that is Dan Crick. He was re-elected this morning by the delegation here. Let's speak about how his uh, old mandate will of course uh, link into the new mandate as you continue with uh, um, being the president of this organization. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. We have our Congress here in Pretoria, the Agri-SA Congress. We're speaking about land and land as the key to shared prosperity. Yes, we have long-standing mandates in Agri-SA regarding land reform. We are progressive in terms of land reform. We argue it from the basis of the Constitution uh, and economic fact. We are progressive and we have discussed that at length this morning. We have discussed uh, the Bella Bella Land Summit. We had all those projects uh, of implementation where farmers are already doing land reform. That was on the agenda. Uh, so yeah, land, absolute key issue, and farm safety uh, were some of, the, uh, some of the core issues that we were talking about. The resolutions on land that were adopted during the Bilabila Summit, um, how did they link in and really puzzle in with uh, what was discussed and that was delivered to the delegation here today? Well, the Bella Bella Land Summit was basically all about showcasing what agriculture is already doing. So much of it is the partnership-based model, where farmers and commercial farmers have simply taken hands with their farm workers, uh, with communities, with black partners, and they created farming operations. And that was what that uh, Bella Bella Summit was about, and the farmers were there to tell their own stories. Now, tomorrow morning on our program, we are three of those farmers that were there at the Bella Bella Summit, and they're going to address the audience here and discuss what made their businesses profitable, how did, they, how did it happen for them, how did they finance it, etc. Uh, and they would uh, give us some advice on how to go forward. Earlier when you delivered your opening address, you highlighted that the country is going through a challenging time, in particular in the agricultural sector, the farming community uh, being under threat in terms of crime. You even appealed to President Cyril Ramaphosa to perhaps, uh, you know, scrutinize the criminal justice system to find solutions and really put criminals behind bars. The criminals that you and perhaps the rest of the country feel are terrorizing the farming community. Yes, exactly. I think, what is it, a week ago that we saw the crime statistics and may we state for the record that it is white farmers and black farmers 
white workers and black workers on farms that get attacked uh, and are murdered. So this is, this is extremely serious. Uh, this is food security. We cannot speak about economic growth and people living in rural areas if they are not safe. So yeah, I did make a pledge to the president to lead us in this. We would like to work with him very strongly. Uh, I think the first important point is the appointment that he's going to make the new director of public prosecutions. We need a, a person of integrity there that will uh, act independently. I think our whole criminal justice system uh, needs a good look. Uh, it must be effective. Uh, our police service, uh, the Minister of Police, we work with him on a regular basis. But uh, I also ask of the President uh, that we support the Minister of Police, but also that we hold him accountable because he's ultimately the person taking care of, uh, of all of our safety. So, yeah. That's what we discussed this morning, uh, making a pledge to the president and making our pledge to the president to work with him as well. Now, every essay always sounds like they um, you know, speak from a sober point of view. How do you react to other organizations who perhaps um, act very irresponsibly when they speak about the issue of land, when they speak about farm murders and other forms of violence that occur within uh, the farming community? How do you react to that? Well, I cannot speak on behalf of those organizations. They can speak for themselves. We have always been sober and rational. But what I have said this morning, that the, the issue of farm murders uh, and, and violence, um, those are extremely emotional issues. But if, but if you have to deal with them, you cannot deal them from, a, from that point of view. You've got to be rational. So we do a lot of research um, to know what we're talking about. You've got to be rational to, to, to affect these problems. Um, so yeah, we are rational. But we speak for ourselves, we speak on behalf of the farmers. Uh, this is agri -SI speaking. All right, uh, thank you so much uh, there. Uh, the newly re-elected uh, president of agri -SI, Dan Crick, here just uh, giving us a sense of what uh, the uh, delegation here is actually talking about, what is um, a priority for the farming community in the country, and just how they will be tackling the land reform debate moving forward. But for now, let's give it back to you in studio. Thanks very much, uh, my colleague uh, Patricia Visaki, reporting there from the Agri-SA Congress.